Okay, this first uh, demo today, and you don't have to do this, but you were just watching and talking, okay? The first uh, demo is, again, the software is called Xcode right here. If you click on it, it'll open up the software on your computer. Um, when you start Xcode, it'll come up to a welcome window. It'll show you what version. Again, we're using version 10 here, version 10. So you can either start with a playground, like I was just telling you in a minute ago, that the playground is, is a quick, easy way to learn the programming because it, it compiles in real time. What the word compile means is it'll run the, run the code. So as you're typing the code, it's automatically being run, and you can see in real time. Uh, it's almost like a web developer. You ever use the web development, the console, console and, and web development? It's very similar to that where you can make a change and it automatically is there, right? And so... Hi, I see you walking outside. You want, uh, it's in the app design. Yes, it is. It's okay. And so, uh, you know, the software has, again, you got your playground, like I was just talking. Then you have an Xcode, which is the project product. And then a clone and an existing project is... One of the things about Xcode and about app development is a lot of people do it at a distance. Right, and so you you're working with people in India, you're working with people in J Japan. Uh, I had a student, uh, uh, Vo. Uh, I wish I could remember her first name, but she uh, made an app uh, uh, the second year we offered this class. Uh, it was like three years ago, or two years ago. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, she made an app, and I'll show you her plan. I don't have her final app here, but um, she made an app, and she had a lot of people in Europe helping her make it. And so they would use GitHub to, you know, if you don't know what Git is, it's a place where you can share code and people can get logged in real time. One of the things about Xcode is that you can log into a GitHub account as you're working. In fact, it'll ask you to log in. You don't need that. I'm not, we're not going to do things at a distance. But we will learn about GitHub and how it works. You don't have to have a GitHub account. So let me let me open up some previous projects uh, so that you can see what they look like. Uh, if I was going to start with a new project, it'll look like this, and we'll go through all these windows together. Um, we'll learn what these are, what the next button is. We can just put in a test in here for now, and let me just open up and uh, show you what it looks like. Again, the software that we use is called Xcode. It, it looks complicated, but once you learn it, it, it's not that complicated. I think you'll understand. It's very visual. If you look here, you'll notice it, the main storyboard is the one we primarily work on, and it looks like a phone right there. And so how we build apps is we actually put pieces on there. You want to put a, a photo on there, we put a window, and then we put the photo in the window. Okay, so it's very visual here. And here's all the pieces that you can put on there. We got navigational controllers, we got boxes, we have collection. This would be something we would make a, a, a photo app with multiple photos in it, right? Tabbed bar controller, split view, and you just drag buttons out there, and boom, there's a button, and in that button I can add some programming. So it's very visual, very visual. Let's open up some previous student stuff and we can get an idea. Um, I put some on here already. Um, oh, here's here's uh, um, here's her app she made. Why? Oh, and what did she make? What did she call it? Do good. Oh, Vicky Vu. That was her name. Yeah, she did a whole app. Actually, this is not the app that she completed. She did a different app, but that was her plan. Um, let's look at some basic ones. Um, uh, here's the, let's, let's open up this one from, uh, this is Jennifer's example. So the midterm project is a game. Here's a, uh, the game right here. And so you can see, and, uh, um, again, my problem is my screen is, is a lot different than yours because I, I don't have as much space as you do on your screen. So I have to kind of move windows around. There we go. Okay, so the midterm project is actually a game that you make on the iPad, and it's a guessing game. So this student made uh, a guessing game on Meerkats, a little 
Northern Soviet and North Africa. And so you can see we, we follow along, but I'm going to want you to make your own kind of game too. And so when you're making an app, uh, you'll see you have programming files. You'll see I have one programming file here called Apple Delegate. We don't really alter that one. This is the uh, programming file that is standard for all apps. The second one's called the View Controller. That's where we do most of the programming in. And then you can make other programming that's linked to the main View Controller. And so let's look at some of the programming for this. Here is the game programming. If I click on it, you'll see this is the object-oriented program that we'd learn. Um, we make objects, and then we, we, we add content to those objects, and we program. So this is an example of the game. And then here is the visual part, and then here's the other programming. Oh, oh, don't look at the words. No, shoo, almost gave away the words. Okay, oh, you didn't see the words, did you? Okay. Now, to run the app on your computer, to, to view it, we use what's called the simulator. You'll notice up here at the very top of this software, you see how it says Meerkats? You see this right here. It's saying, I'm going to simulate on the iPad Pro 10.0. 5 inch and you can actually choose whatever phone you want to test your app on right you can see them all there so that you know it's best to, to choose the one that you're programming so since we're doing an iPad it's an iPad app we're going to do the iPad if i click on it it'll run the app so basically what it's doing is it's launching the app into a separate piece of software called a simulator and in that simulator, it looks just like it does in the um, on your phone. In fact, you could take the simulator and connect it to your phone, so you can actually interact with it on your phone. Okay. Um, of course, you need the cable. And then, uh, so here's the simulator. It's still run. It's still trying to launch here. There we go. It's still launching. Still launching. There we go. Okay, so again, when we make apps in the classroom, we will simulate them, and pretty much we simulate as we work so that we can test it. Uh, again, this is a full working phone. I, if I click here, it'll actually go to the um, desktop and everything, or the, you know, the, let's try the game. Okay, what, what do you think the first word is? Something that relates to meerkats. We're, they're from Africa. Is it? Could this be A F? How do you spell Africa? <laughs> A F R. Maybe we'll try A. No. How about uh, what else are they? Are they fuzzy? No. Give me a letter. E. 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 No E's. Give me another letter. B. No B's. Oh, we're running out of meerkats. Yeah, it's a hangman game. That's what it is. Yes. Give me a letter. Come on, we got to get one. B. P. 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 No P's. Uh oh. Got three cats left. O. Oh, there is an O. T. No T. Uh oh, we got two mirror cats left. S. S. No S. And the last one, we're going to die here. At... Oh, there was an N. Come on, it's a word that relates to Africa or meerkats. We can cheat and look at the words if we want in the programming. That's why I said, oh, don't look, because it was in the programming. One more meerkat left. Somebody give me a R. R-O-N, no. I. I. No, we would lost. I don't know what the word was. Okay. We have another one, though. Let's try again. I swear one of them's Africa, and that's not A, so I clicked on A. How about E? Two E's. There's two E's. L, 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 L. Oh, I guess this is L. No, that's I, L. No L. N? No N. Uh-oh. T? Oh, there's a T at the end. What, what end? What word could it be? R. R. Ooh, there was an R. 
What's the word? Desert. Desert. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's try. D. Oh. S. That was. We won winner. So you could actually have a screen. She doesn't have a screen, but you can have a screen that says, hey, do you want something things like that? So this is your midterm project. It's something that is like this. Again, we follow the book. The book is very good at how to do this. But I want you to customize it for yourself. So you might want to start thinking of a game that you would like to do this in like four weeks from now. So it's kind of early on in the semester. So that's one. Uh, let's look at, a, how about we look at the uh, music player. So we'll look at a music player. So um, so another project you do is called a, a, a music player. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, uh, maybe this one, maybe this one. I don't know if this is, you know, this one's okay. So again, um, in this class, we'll, you'll, you will have the ability to make a, you know, it's basically an, an app that plays music. Uh, you can have several songs. One of the, Challenges is that um, I, we embed the music into the app, so it actually the file size of the app is kind of large because you're taking music files and putting them into the same area. Um, you'll notice you do have uh, again the programming and so on. You have images; these are going to be uh, animation. So you'll see this will animate as we play the music. So, let's run the simulator here. And again, iPhone 8, you can see what your, you know. A lot of my apps are done with older versions, so that's why you see an older phone here. Okay, so for this example, uh, yeah, dude, Justin Bieber, Beamer, Beamer, I don't even know how to say his name. Bieber? Beamer? Beamer? Beamer. 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 So uh, here is a way of choosing. You might have uh, maybe used the date thing or picker inside of Apple before where it kind of scrolls. Uh, you have a rewind, pause, play, stop, or you know, so we learn the music control. We have a volume control. Okay, so we learn to use uh, assets like this. So if you play... Okay, I don't know what this song is. Oh, let's choose another one. What's this one? Waiting for Love. I don't know any of this music. I'm, I'm old. Is this music? I don't know. I don't know what that song is. Man of the Woods. I don't know. Is it Justin Timberlake? I know his name. But as you can see, you got volume control. Yeah, so we learn how to do the volume control. We can fast forward it. You can pause it. You can play it. And you got this simple animation. So it, it, it looks pretty simple, and it, it is quite simple, but you know we're learning how to do the animation in this lesson. Volume is, is, is controls of the uh, you know, media, how to import music, how to program a window. This is kind of something you do after you do the near cat or no, the um, hangman game. Okay? So you might want to think about your music app too. What kind of animation you might want to have and what kind of music you might want. Yep. Um Yeah. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what the basics are as far as uh, you know you can see. The interface. How about we get to the lab start and we can start on lab things today. How about that? Okay. So again, let me let me quit this X code here. I asked you to download the lab part. And so uh, you should have a folder on your computer right here called Intro to App Development, right here. And this is the lab part of the class. Okay, how basically you're gonna be following these uh, playground files. How do they work? Well, it's an easy way to, to, to use them. It's just a double click on them. So uh, if, you don't, uh, if, if you don't have these files, again, you can find them on Canvas. 
the files we're looking at again we're right here in the first lesson in canvas so if you go to canvas and you hit assignment and lab for first week here boom and then right here right click on this and download it and then um, put it on your computer uncompress it and then you'll have the folder so let's get started we're gonna do the first one very simple. Number one, I'm going to double click on it. It should automatically launch the Xcode for you. It should. And it says, hey, it's been downloaded off the internet. That's okay. We don't have a virus. And here it is. So here's how the lab part works. You, again, there's usually several programming. There are pages you just read and, and do what it tells you to do and it teaches you basic programming things. First thing it says here is if you see the dots flashing across the screen, your Xcode should be running fine. So, uh, let me download this real quick. Let me save my lab. And then I'm going to install my lab. And save my desktop. And load. And as you may know, I'm starting on the final box. So again, it's just the little dots are doing that. It's saying, hey, it's running fine. It's running fine. Look at that. It's working. So again, you're in Xcode. If you look in the upper corner, in the upper left, yeah, left corner, it says Xcode. It should say Xcode up there. I don't know why yours doesn't. But mine says, see how it says Xcode. It'll pop up there. So let's click on the next one. You see the bars. Let's click on the button right here where it says next. Okay, what is Playground? A Playground is a place where you can play and experiment with code. It sees instant results without anything getting in your way. A Playground mix is part of it that explains things like the text with live code that you can change. The simplest line of code you can write is just a number. So you can see there's a number right there and if I click next to the number you'll notice my I bar is flashing next to it. See my I bar flashing next to it? Click next to the number. If you hit return, you can type in your own number. So I'm going to hit return, and let's type in 675. How about that? Notice it'll pop up over here. It's running the code in real time. So as you are learning programming, it's going to give you the results over here in this window automatically. Okay? That's what Playground is. Notice how the number above looks different. The style of text is editable code, which means you can write or change or even make stuff up. Right? So you can type anything you want. For negative numbers, use the minus sign. Notice how the number also shows up in the gray area to the right. You can see it over there. This area is called the results sidebar. As you add or change code, the playground runs your code again and updates the results in the sidebar. Again, it's over here. It's a very simple, easy way to learn some basic programming. The first two are very simple, but they'll teach you the basics of programming. Now, we don't really make apps in the playground. It's just to learn. We saw the other, when we were making the game, you can make these swift files. So it's the same concept. So follow what it asks you to do. It says click a line of code to move the cursor there. Type and to start editing. Change the number a few times. Add a few more numbers on a separate line. Notice every time you make a change, the results are updated in the sidebar. They just want you to just, you know, put in more numbers. 
or maybe write a word. Uh oh, what happened there? Ah, uh, it didn't know what I did. You'll come up with an error. Look, expected number or constructor. I just put in a word. It didn't know what that word was. Uh, didn't know if it was a string or what you were doing. Ah, uh, you might have to define more than just numbers. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If you get an error like that, what can you do? If you get these errors, well, the first thing you can do is it's a red dot. See the little you know, little stop sign there. If you click on that, it'll give you some information. Okay. It'll even ask you if you want to fix it. Look, there's a fix button. No, I didn't know what I was saying. I just typed in the word great and it just gave me this horrible line of code here. Okay, so I can either hit fix or I can hit delete. If I hit fix, it might put in some code that, hey, it likes this code. Now it doesn't know what this code is and it still might give you some more information. But uh, we can just delete it. So be careful what you do. Notice it had a debugger pops up down here. We'll learn about what's called debugging in programming. <laughs> you can run into bugs. There's a nice debugger in this program where you can step through your code and see where the problems are. We learn how to do that, stepping through the code. We can jump over a bug if we need to to see what, what is the problem as well. So we'll learn about the debugging down there. So when you're all done with this one, let me close this if I can or move it down. Go to the next one. Ah, oh, this one's going to talk about math and how to add numbers. You can multiply, subtract, multiplication is the asterisk, slash for division, grouping things in just like you would in, in, in math, right? Or in algebra and things like that. So you can do math operations. Questions about that playground? That will help you get started. Maybe you're new and, and you don't have the files here, do you? Because you don't have access to Canvas. I can give it to you in one of the files. Okay, so you can start right now if you don't have access. Okay. Any questions so far? If you want to just start on the lab, I think you can just do the lab right now and just start trying. I recorded what I did today, and again, like I said, every class I'll record how, how the recording works is at the end of class after my lecture I'll stop it